About six months ago, I installed an RX 6800 in my Mac One, uh, my Mac Pro 5.1, and I did it without doing the Pixels modification. And I, I thought I'd done enough research to be confident that I could power it that way uh, with the two mini, mini six-pin connectors on the back plane uh, to the two eight-pin connectors on the card, and not do any damage to my back plane or anything. But I've always kind of worried about it, and I always had wanted a, a way to know that for sure, that uh, you know, I wasn't going to overdraw the back plane and do some damage, or even maybe not do some damage, but hit the shutdown trips for the uh, internal protection. And uh, so I've run it six months now. I've run it in Flight Sim quite a bit. I've uh, played some other games on it and everything, um, none of which load the card like Flight Sim does. And um, I came up with two conclusions. One is it's hard to load that card in the Mac Pro. If you watch the power as you're playing the game, it just doesn't go up there to uh, 250 watts like the card's rated for. Uh, but Flight Simulator will get, will get it up above 200 watts at times if you do the right settings and everything. Made a posting on the Mac uh, on the Mac Pro Upgrade Group and got a few responses. I appreciate all of them. One of those responses was from Martin Lowe. And Martin Lowe said, um, you know, I mentioned the 225 watt limit that we've used that, okay, cards that are 225 watts or less can be powered by the backplane and the, the slot. And cards that are over 225 should be pixless mod powered. Uh, but Martin said 225 watts doesn't matter. What matters is how much are we drawing from each of those mini six pen connectors on the back plane, and that that should not exceed 100 watts, because Martin and other users have tested that and they've found that um, 100 watts is safe coming from the mini uh, six pen connectors. Uh, 110 watts is okay. 120 watts is where they hit the trip, and somewhere 100. 20 watts, your system will shut down on you to protect that from overdraw. So back that down 20 watts to give it a little margin for error and say don't exceed 100 from a single mini six pin connector. That's what the limit should be, not the total wattage of the card. So I, I replied to Martin, I said, how, how can I do that? How can I measure that? And he gave me uh, two solutions, iStat menus and I believe it was hardware monitor. So I tried bo uh, downloading both of those. Hardware monitor is no longer supported by its uh, uh, publisher. They don't sell licenses anymore. So I was able to download it, but I wasn't able to activate it and actually use it. And so I did download iStat menus. And wow, after playing around with that for a day, I'm a huge fan of iStat menus. Um, what you'll see in the video is the trial license, but I'll be buying a license uh, to be able to keep that going on my machine. Lots of uh, visibility into what's happening under the hood in the Mac Pro. So anyway, uh, what I've done is I've uh, run Unigen Heaven benchmark uh, to try to load the card up and be able to watch that power. And I'm going to show you those Unigen Heaven runs in this video. Uh, when you watch this video, keep in mind that when I'm talking, the, the, the uh, benchmark is running at actual time. In between the talking, I speed it up five times so you don't have to sit there so long. But I did that so that you can um, scrub through the whole thing and see what the power draw is all the way and you know, see what the real highest power draw is. Now, this um, iStat menus gives the power draw in amps. And so it's a 12 volt system. So um, one amp is times 12 volts is 12 watts. So uh, we're looking at, uh, we want to keep under 100 watts. So uh, eight amps would be 96 watts. Nine amps would be 108 watts. So we want to be somewhere around... Um, you know, 8.3 amps would be 100 watts. If we're 8.3 amps or low, lower, then we're keeping under the 100 watts, and that, that would be the goal here. If we're regularly exceeding 100 watts, then we're getting too close to that, that shutoff and probably uh, would recommend to people maybe not use this card without a Pixelist mod. Um, so uh, I'll give you the, the results right now. Uh, we ran the hard card as hard as... Uh, Unigen Heaven will run it and recorded the you know the whole run and you can scrub through it and you can see uh, the amperage draws at, at each point in that and the answer is the highest draw we got was 7.4 amps on PCIe A, 8 amps on PCIe Boost B. Those are the two mini six pin connectors on the back plane 
and then only 2.2 amps from the slot. So that was one of the real questions I had was in, in looking at this wattage, you know, how much is coming from the slot, how much is coming from the two backplane connectors. Um, not much is coming from the slot. It's, it's pulling very little from the slot. But even having said that, uh, the total uh, of that is, uh, so eight, um, eight amps is 96 watts, and that's less than the 100 uh, we wanted to see. We never exceeded eight amps during the whole test, so we never exceeded 100 amps on either of the mini six pins and the total wattage uh, of that would be uh, 211 watts so the maximum instantaneous draw we saw was 211 watts uh, at no point in this did we exceed 100 watts from either of the mini backplane connectors and so you know this uh, i guess the six months of experience plus this test result says rx6800 in the classic mac pro is good without pixelless mod and if we can say that, then we can also say this is the most powerful GPU that you should run in the in the Mac Pro 5 comma 1 or the 4 comma 1 uh, without a pixelless mod or an external PSU or, or some means of undervolting it uh, or whatever. So if you go to the, the next level up, which is the RX 6800 XT, um, that's going to push it over. That, that's going to add enough additional power to push it over that 100 watts and uh, require the pixelless mod. And I think that's in line with what we've been saying all along. It's just that now I have more confidence in being able to say, yep, this is good. Um, after uh, running all this on the uh, RX 6800, I went upstairs to my other Mac Pro, which uh, has an RX 580, and I ran the whole thing on the RX 580. So if you're interested in seeing what the power draw looks like on the RX 580, that's on there as well. And um, I'll say that as far as uh, running this on different computers, the only differences between the two, the, the one upstairs with the RX 580 is um, a dual processor. It's an eight core, R, it's the X5677. So it's the same clock speed as the X5690 on my main machine, but it has two additional cores. And we can argue all day long about whether that makes it faster or slower. I know people have made the case that having additional cores or having that dual processor actually makes it slower on single core uh, tasks like gaming and potentially this, this benchmark uh, as opposed to uh, obviously dual processors or more cores makes it faster on multi-core uh, processes like uh, CPU video encoding or something. So um, yeah, there might be a little bit of effect, but I really think that, that what you're looking at here is graphics card performance, not system effects or anything like that. So I uh, hope you enjoy the video. I hope this uh, clears up any uh, concerns that you might have about power draw with this card in the Mac Pro 5.1. Um, I'm more confident than ever that this is a good thing to do. And so um, I hope you enjoy. Thanks. Using iStat menus in the menu bar at the top, we have PCI Boost A, PCI Boost B, and PCIe slot one 12 volts displayed up on the menu bar. So just to kind of give us a, a baseline of what the power draws are, I'm going to go ahead and install Unigen Heaven. And so you see that we're getting 0.4 amps, 2.3 amps, and 1.6 amps. And uh, while Heaven's getting installed, I'll explain that. Um, so those are the ampere draws for each of the uh, PCIe backplane uh, connectors, boost A and boost B. And then the, the third one over is the actual slot power itself. So what we want to find out is how much power is the RX 6800 drawing from each of the uh, mini six pin connectors, which are the two on the left, and then the slot, which is the one on the right. And uh, watching it while we're installing and opening Unigen Heaven just kind of gives us a background of, uh, you know, what it would be like for mundane tasks. So... Um, an amp times 12 gives you the watts, so one amp is 12 watts. We want to make sure that we keep under uh, 75 watts if we're trying to meet the Apple maximum, or 100 watts is, uh, has been tested and considered safe by the Mac community. So 100 watts would be uh, something less than 9 amps. So if we get around 8 amps, that's the most we really want to see. 8 amps would be 96 watts. So uh, we're going to run Unigen Heaven. We're going to run it at the, um, start with a 1600 by 900 resolution. 
at the ultra settings with tessellation and stereo 3D disabled. And uh, we'll see what, uh, what kind of power draws we hit running this uh, benchmark. So I ran it on 1600, 1600 by 900 resolution first because I wanted the whole window to fit on the screen. Uh, but what I found out as I ran it is it didn't really load the card up and it didn't get me uh, high power draws. So like right now we're seeing uh, the PCIe Boost B connection giving us 4.5 amps. So that's um, oh, 50, 50 some watts. Um, so well under Apple's maximum. Point of note is that the, the current draw in the middle at 3.8, 3.9 amps right now is uh, significantly higher than the other mini six pin draw and significantly higher than the slot draw. So right now the, the card is pulling quite a bit more power from uh, one of the mini six pins than it is from the other. And it's pulling more from both mini six pins than it is from the slot. So again, the Left is one of the mini six pin connectors. The middle is one of the mini six pin connectors and the right is the actual slot power. So we get a final score of 112 uh, FPS and that's 1600 by 900 resolution. That didn't really test, uh, test the power of the card that much. So let's try 2560 by 1600 resolution. That's the highest resolution that's available in this Unigen Heaven benchmark. And run the benchmark. So this is 2560 by 1600. We're seeing that uh, middle power draw, which again is one of the mini PCIe connectors. There's seven and a half, there's eight amps. One of the things I think is really interesting about this, you see it's, it's pretty steadily drawing about 2.1 amps from the slot. And um, two amps is only 24 watts. So in, in a lot of our discussions, we talk about the PCIe slot being rated for 75 watts, but it's uh, in reality, it's just it's pulling much less from the slot. It's taking most of its power from the two mini six pin connectors. So again, we see it up to 8 amps, which is 96 watts, but we really don't ever see it exceed 8 watts. And uh, this is the most that I can load this card with this benchmark. Okay, and here's our final score, 106.1 frames per second, uh, which I think is very good. And uh, that's 2560 by 1600. Um, yeah, good score. Uh, nice smooth render and everything. And we'll go ahead and uh, quit the application. Okay, now I'm running this in my other Mac that has an RX 580. And uh, we're gonna put it on the same settings that we were running on uh, the other computer, 2560 by 1600, ultra quality, tessellation and stereo 3d disabled and um, this this window you know i'm not running this on a high definition monitor well i, I guess i am a full high definition monitor but um, the the window set bigger than that so you can't see the whole uh, window but um, this this is what the power draw of a rx 580 is uh, comparing to the rx 6800 and so on the RX 6800, we saw uh, amperages up to 8 amps on that middle one. And here we're seeing the same kind of uh, difference that the, you know, the, 
the uh, PCIe booster in the middle here, that 5.3 amp number, 5.4 amps, is drawing more power than the other one, uh, but not a great deal more power than the other one. It's, it looks like it's maybe a little more closer to balance. Uh, but we're also seeing where the RX 6800 only took 2.1 amps out of the slot. This one's taking three amps, so this is taking a you know an additional full amp out of the slot. Um, has more of a, a power draw balance uh, equal, right? It's or it's closer to equal between the slots and the boosters than the uh, RX 6800 is. Yeah, the RX 6800 really didn't take that much, but anyway, running this benchmark on the RX 580, we're getting much slower frame rates, uh, much less smooth video but um, you know, at, at a maximum of about 5.2 amps. So five amps is 60 watts. So it's 62, 63 watts that we're getting from either one of those connectors. And if you get the idea that the RX 580 is maybe a more power efficient card than the RX 6800 because we're um, getting lower, like you know, we saw up to eight uh, amps of power on the RX 6800, and we're seeing five and a half on the RX 580. Um, it is not a more efficient card because we're getting double or, or, or more the frame rate out of the uh, RX 6800 XT at that uh, power difference. So in real world applications, the RX 6800 uses less power than the 580 because you have to drive the 580 a lot harder to get the same output that you do on the 6800. So uh, the 6800 is a very efficient graphics card. The 580 probably was for its day, but it's not now. There's a 5.7 amps, so that's getting up close to 72 watts. And the score for the RX 580 is a 634 score with a 25.2 frames per second. So uh, much, much, much worse performance than the RX 6800. So I guess that goes to show you, you know, there's a lot of argument about is it worthwhile to put this kind of a card in the uh, classic Mac Pro? Uh, well, you, you get better performance for it. Uh, maybe you could get more performance out of the card if you put the card in a newer PC but certainly with a Mac Pro, you get that performance.